And the Bank of Ghana's Monetary Policy Committee has left its main interest rate unchanged at 30% after the annual inflation slowed for the third month in a row in October. Richmond Fripong, a financial advisory consultant, joins me now to discuss this move. Richmond, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Esther. Just to get your initial thoughts on the outcome of the meeting uh, from this, uh, the MPC, uh, once again, just like the, meet, the last meeting, and I believe the meeting before that also, and I know that the governor did mention then that uh, they were happy, uh, the MPC was happy about the trajectory of inflation, the deceleration we were seeing, and that if that continued, he went as far as saying that uh, they are, could actually be on track. Uh, to going back to the target the inflation target bank of this uh, band of the central bank what are your thoughts well i, I think it's quite predictable um, the focus of the central bank at this particular moment even more critical is price stability and so they want to use their monetary policy tool at their disposal to reduce and target inflation your last point about they driving to achieve the target for the end of year inflation of about 8% plus or minus two, um, it's not going to be possible. And looking at where we are standing at the moment. And that explains why possibly they stayed the MPC rate at um, 30. Well, he did mention that, uh, I mean, the sort of a caveat then back then stating that uh, that will be, of course, a barren or a barren uh, external and unanticipated shocks like rising international crude oil prices and an adjustment upwards of utility, uh, the prices of utilities. I suppose that has happened uh, since then. Uh, but where does that leave the central bank in terms of how it tries to make that pathway back to its target band and keeping prices under control? I think we would have to rule that out this year in terms of the target. Um, even if you look at the budget that was read a week ago, you see the target now has changed even from the 8% for this year. And the estimated outlook is about 15%. That should tell you that there are still infl inflationary pressure still um, hovering around. And for us to achieve the 8% target this year, um, it doesn't matter how we screw the MPC rate. I still believe we'll not be able to achieve it. Let's even take it as given that um, the crude oil prices um, even stay. And let's even take it that the Forex implications um, depreciate at a decreasing rate. I still believe we would be very far from achieving the percent targets. Well, you're absolutely right. Obviously, there has to be a longer term, uh, at least nothing that, that will be going into 2024. But let's talk about uh, other things. Uh, let's talk about the government's target to raise uh, 176.4 uh, billion uh, CDs in revenue for 2024 vis-a-vis uh, -vis GDP growth, uh, which the government is, says uh, it's hoping to come in at 2.8% uh, also for the 2024 fiscal year. But how would you describe uh, the government's uh, domestic revenue mobilization efforts? I know that a number of taxes have been increased. I know that, of course, the government has run into some issues uh, in terms of you know, how all of that is controlled contributing to the cost of living crisis for the average Ghanaian, looking at the cost of petrol, transportation, etc. Well, if you look at the revenue side, you know, the fiscal policy looks at the revenue and the expenditure. And so it's either resource mobilization or resource allocation. Um, at the moment, if you look at the handle on taxes, um, it's looking good. And from the projections the government is making, um, if, for example, they look at the property rates and the households they have identified that is now coming into the tax bracket it is something good to behold and it looks like it will work and um, the other side is that because we still have challenges with the resource allo uh, allocation side there is still some level of um, discipline that is required on the expense side so that it matches up and closes up and the deficit so we want to see how it goes in terms of the revenue mobilization and um, particularly if you look at the electronic facts and um, it has worked quite well this year and going into 2024 i believe the revenue side of the fiscal policy is going to work the challenge and the gap that needs to be corrected is the expense side and, and that is still something we have to battle with 
Well, the government does say that it has been taking some measures to bring down the cost of running uh, the government. And also, in addition to that, I also wanted you to talk quickly talk about uh, the second tranche of that IMF extended credit facility, 600 million. Uh, but also, more importantly, the fact that Ghana is the government is still in talks with bilateral and commercial creditors, uh, of course, to restructure that debt. China is a big component. Uh, uh, in this story, but what are your thoughts in terms of how things are progressing uh, so far with uh, unlocking that debt, uh, talking to creditors, what they're willing to accommodate in terms of loss, potential losses that could be incurred in the process? Right, so two parts. The first part is government's comments on how well they are doing with the expense side in terms of the discipline and the fiscal rigidities. Um, you don't see it practically. And especially challenge going into an election year in 2024, it will be extremely difficult to achieve that. Um, if you look at the posture of government in terms of even the size of government, nothing really has been done about it. And so that is going to be something that is going to come under a lot of scrutiny going into the election year. Um, in terms of the access to credit, particularly um, the external one, you notice that the milestones we were looking at early November, and it is becoming difficult to cross that mark. Um, probably um, we are going to go past end of November, and that is going to also create some challenges on the reserve side, because at the moment, if there is any significant change, even to the past three effect from Forex, it is because of the inflows that we have already received from the program and from the, from the fund. And if there seems to be further delays for this next tranche, um, is going to be a challenge. And it appears there may be some delays because of some of the sign-offs that are still pending. Hmm, right. Uh, just looking at, uh, let's quickly talk about the currency, where the CD is and how the CD has performed so far this year. The, the, the uh, governor did mention that, of course, part of the stability we're seeing in the, macro, in the broader macro economy, uh, the uh, inflation coming down, the CD, he says, uh, also is getting stronger. Uh, talk to us about the story of the CD this year and all the, just a brief summary. Uh, of how the CD has performed this year? I think the greatest disruption that has happened um, and, and corrected the numbers has a lot to do with the balance of payment corrections and the IMF program that improved our reserve position. Um, nothing much to do with the CD becoming stronger. If anything at all, it has depreciated at a decreasing rate this year, which is fairly good. But it is not about the strength per se of the CD. It's about the strengthening of the reserve position that is accounted for largely by the credit position and the inflows received from the IMF and some from the mines repatriation of profit and then also from the oil receipts. Now, finally, I wanted to just quickly get your thoughts on this growth, 2.8%. I know that in the broader sub-Saharan African region, the growth has been sluggish, uh, with a few exceptions, probably somewhere in Cote d'Ivoire, where we still see growth at you know, somewhere around 7%. But mostly, the story has been the same for most uh, you know, countries in sub-Saharan Africa. But is this, will this be enough for Ghana, the much-needed uh, either shot in the arm or that fire that could you know, get the engine significantly uh, roaring forward. Is that going to be enough? Unfortunately, I'll say no, not enough. And if Ghana is not even careful, we may miss that slightly um, going into 2024. But the 2% um, from where we are looks quite okay, but it is not good enough for us if we want to see a significant turnaround. Right. Richard